Good evening, welcome to my channel. I am Angel from Lima in Peru and today I want to tell you about this book called The Bad Girls in History by Rocio Silva Santisteban, a writer, lawyer and professor. Well, published by Meeting, um, belonging to Estrendo Mudo, in 360 pages, the introduction is the um, kind of testimony about her relationship with law, with Marxism, with uh, San Marcos University, her vocation uh, to become a writer, um, the many problems she had, um, the threats she uh, suffered, and also uh, her defense of abortion, imagine that. Well, many incidents in her personal and especially professional life, her reflection on how strongly um, women entered the, the fields of literature and art in my country during the 1980s. One of them, Maria Emilia Cornejo, with a poem, kind of polemic, called The Bad Girl of History, was the inspiration for the title of this book. So the, the second part, which I um, consider the first, is called Portraits. There are 19 biographies, um, some opinions of women, so different one from the other, but with some similarities as well, uh, that they were rather misunderstood or badly understood, um, neglected or just forgotten. Um, from Francisca Pizarro, one of the first mestizo uh, women in Peru, and Chimpuoclio, an Inca prince who um, ended up very, very sadly um, until Gabriela Mistral, the Chilean Nobel uh, Literature Prize and her condition of lesbian, which is or was uncomfortable for some people. Even Barbie, can you imagine that? Okay, And other women that personally I didn't know and by knowing something about them thanks to this book they don't appear to be examples of, of anything. Well, one of the examples is um, Nancy Spungen, I, I, I suppose the pronunciation of her name is. The next part is called Feminism, um, Complexes, and also uh, um, The next part is called Feminism, injustice and complexes. Many kind of humiliations to um, maids, you know, those uh, women who worked uh, doing the housework, uh, which, um, which is called, or who are called the help, you know, I remember a movie about that. Uh, even uh, the humiliations that she, as a little child, uh, witnessed, uh, and she says something very, very sad, that discrimination and segregation is something that we learn since we are little children. There are so um, depressing uh, testimonies of uh, maids uh, who were virtually given okay, by, by their parents and, and exploited and exploited since they were very, very little. The uh, infrahuman or subhuman conditions under which they live in her employer's uh, houses. So a kind of mm, tragic combination of uh, different aspects of discrimination because of her social class, uh, because of her race uh, and because of her gen their gender. Okay, well, also she mentions um, her own experience as a Latin American woman in Europe with a, um, a passport like the Peruvian one in the 1990s, not prestigious at all, and the many um, horrible insults, uh, insults uh, that she has received throughout her, her um, career since uh, whore, okay, until Creole, you know, um, not a mestizo woman, since uh, Capier uh, until um, 
terrorist defender. The many attacks, even uh, physical uh, violence that she has um, endured. So she asks, uh, what is um, uh, political harassment? What is political harassment? If that exists or this is a feminist exaggeration? Well, um, she also mentions the history of women and elections, the pioneers um, who were ridiculed and attacked. It is expressed on page 209. The, um, the pioneers in the United States, France, and England. So, um, against some people who accuse uh, Ms. Uh, Silva Santisteban of being a terrorist defender. Uh, and I, I have watched some videos and some comments on those videos in which she's attacked or she's called that way. She um, feel, she'll feel sorry for the lack of coherence and unity of um, you know the, the, the left in our country. And she says something like a black shadow that was was um, in destroying everything um, because it was uh, hungry for power, for blood, and for gunpowder. Okay, so this is expressed on page 212, and yeah, that definitely refers to terrorist groups like uh, Shining Path and Tupac Amaru. Well, um, other reflections that she writes uh, are about um, success uh, that women have and how sometimes men feel uh, little, uh, men feel insignificant in, in, when it comes to a woman like that. She mentions the case of the United States in which um, some women who are successful, uh, professionally speaking, are um, portrayed as um, unhappy, you know, and wanting a man, you know. So an inoffensive woman is preferred. So um, the new man has to be both solid and sensitive, has to put together his masculine and his feminine self. Can you imagine that? Then there is a, um, an essay in that re um, refers to cumbia, you know, that Latin American uh, musical genre. And she affirms that this is one of the most uh, misogynistic um, musical genres. Well, I'm not an expert in this field, however, if she says that the central topic of Cumbia songs is, you know, losing uh, the, the, the woman that a man loved and how he cries because she left him, is that misogyny? Um, she says that um, that misogynist uh, Cumbia defines a uh, woman or women as uh, traitors. But I understand that this or that cumbia song uh, referred to a woman in particular, not to the feminine gender in, in general. Well, then she continues um, um, talking about or writing about uh, gender. If that is a kind of ideology, as it is debated in our country, or that is an approach. And the very debate on the existence or how pertinent, how necessary or unnecessary it is to define a feminine literature. If this is um, um, correct, proper, or maybe we are sentencing uh, female writers to be or to live in a kind of ghetto. And the last part, which is called uh, a little shy and not uh, ashamed at all, is something more, um, you know, personal about her father and his uh, dogs, the, the boys and girls in her neighborhood who ended up very, very badly um, addicted to drugs, her um, love uh, for uh, Cesare Pavese, uh, a poet, and her um, kind of messy relationship with books. So uh, even though there are some uh, aspects, some parts in this book in which I might disagree, uh, I can't help considering this book as a kind of manifesto, a kind of, um, you know, call uh, to us to um, analyze this um, issue.
you know, uh, gender inequality, um, the, the role of women, you know, in, in, in history, you know, the, the very uh, structure of this book um, with testimonies, interviews, biographies and essays and makes us uh, appreciate the role of women, the achieved things and things that have not been yet you know, from different perspectives, from different angles. It might be uh, too innocent, perhaps, what is uh, expressed here. Uh, however, um, it says that um, by writing and by fighting, you know, women might transform their situation and also the world for the better. So I have to agree with this. Uh, so I think the key is not to um, you know, go from one extreme to another extreme, from a hate speech from different sides, but not, uh, or we, we must not uh, ignore the, the issue. So that's a very, very recommended book. Bye-bye.